There's been a significant uptick in catalytic converter thefts nationwide, including here in San Diego. The city of Carlsbad passed the county's first law targeting these thefts last month. Encinitas could be the next city to follow. And joining us around the table now are Jennifer Atenza and Detective Chris James from the Oceanside Police Department. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate it. You know, we hear a lot about these thefts. First and foremost, I think a lot of people wonder, like, what are these catalytic converters? And you just made two arrests yesterday. I did, and I can show you a catalytic converter if you want. Would love to yeah. see it. All right. I have one right here. A lot of people are going to, you know, they, they hear the word, and they're like, well, what exactly is it? What does this thing do? Yeah. So this was actually recently stolen. Uh, you can see the jagged edges and the torn wires on the top, how it was pretty savagely ripped from the vehicle. Uh, it's dirty, and that's what a stolen yeah. catalytic converter looks like. Okay. Why and catalytic converters? Catalytic converters are made out of platinum group metals, and those are more valuable than gold. Uh, sometimes they're worth thirty thousand dollars an ounce, so it's a very lucrative. Thirty thousand dollars an ounce. Yeah. How much is how one. much is in a catalytic like you know in one of these? It's on a car. It depends. It fluctuates between Priuses and trucks. Uh, sometimes you have to get thirty catalytic converters to equal one ounce to recycle or steal or so basically a thousand dollars it could be worth to, to somebody who steals why is like why is this a new crime or maybe one that we're now just talking about they more talked and more. about copper wires and things like that but now this i think this kind of after copper wires died down this started to take the place mm -hmm. and then after you know COVID happened we saw this huge increase and a lot of that had to do with um, bail scheduling and charges being cited and released and stuff like that. So these criminals thought there were no consequences for their actions. Okay. So Jennifer, tell us what, what people need to know out there. You know, people are, want to protect their cars, want to protect mm -hmm. their stuff. Why, you know, what, what do people need to know? What can they do to protect themselves? I think it's so important because it's such an easy crime for criminals to commit. It takes two minutes for them to roll under your vehicle, make two cuts and be wow. off. And it's thousands of dollars for vehicle owners to replace the part so we want to make sure that we're educating the public about how they can prevent becoming a victim. There's a lot that people can do. We all live in beautiful Southern California and San Diego, and we don't use our garages for our vehicles, but if we can, we should. We really encourage people to start parking smart, park in well-lit areas, use alarms for your vehicles, and if you can, install a cage or a shield on your converter, that's the best way to prevent becoming a victim. You know, you talk a little bit about like people becoming victims, but there are also vehicles that are targeted most often. Um, talk about those and, and who should be taking a look at their car and making sure that they do protect it. Sure. Priuses and hybrid vehicles are fairly often targeted. The most often targeted vehicles are. Uh, they're platinum group metals, the catalytic converters are consistent of more platinum group metals, and uh, that's why they're more targeted. Uh, it's just a cleaner catalytic converter. It's worth more. Talk to us about um, etching mm -hmm. into a catalytic converter, how that happens, how people out there can do it, and uh, if somebody's found without one, I guess that's the, the law in Carlsbad anyway right now, that if they're found with a catalytic converter, that's not that doesn't something that they can them. prove yeah. is theirs. So how, how does that work? Yeah, sure. So etching helps us serialize the catalytic converter to the specific vehicle. Um, at our etching event on Saturday, for instance, we're putting the license plate of the vehicle into the catalytic converter and having it serialized with the National Insurance Crime Bureau. That does a litany of things. It makes it so that we can trace the catalytic converter back to a victim, and it also makes it to where if we encounter a suspect with a catalytic converter that has a license plate etched in it, they're subject to being arrested for uh, a felony offense of altering a serial number on a vehicle. Is there any push maybe to have uh, the manufacturers of these catalytic converters do that as, as a normal thing so that it's not something you have to do after the fact? Sure. There was actually in, uh, in a meeting I was recently at, a Chula Vista detective named Samson Leonard came up with a uh, Senate bill proposal where it requires people who sell vehicles new and used to etch VINs into the vehicle, into the catalytic converter mm -hmm. of the vehicle. Um, you have an etching event. Yes. Um, talk a little bit about that and do people have to get an appointment and do they just have to come from Oceanside or can they come from anywhere in the county? We're so excited. Saturday, yeah. this Saturday is our first etching event in the city of Oceanside um, and we're holding it at Lens Auto Body. We have filled up on registrations. Registrations filled up within the first day of us opening up wow. those appointments. So um, based on the needs of our community, we'll look to host future events as well. Lens has been so supportive and they're looking to also offer this as a regular service at their shop. 
So help us understand too, um, we talked about it, Carlsbad has passed this rule mm -hmm. and Sanitas is in the process of doing the same. Oceanside doesn't have an ordinance per se, but tell us what you have, what the county has and how it all works together. And obviously it's not just a problem for one part of our county. Sure, thank you for asking me that. In Oceanside, the, the city council, the mayor, the chief, all the command, they're all supportive of attacking this. And months ago they empowered me to do whatever I could to analyze this crime, uh, look at the trends, and figure out a possible way to address it. Mm -hmm. um, it. So I researched for hours trying to figure it out and I saw that a lot of places didn't have a lot of collaborations with neighboring agencies in a region. Uh, so basically with the support of a lot of people in, in the uh, Carlsbad Police Department and San Marcos Sheriff Department, we were able to create something called the Catalytic Converter Initiative. And within that initiative, I researched laws applicable to stealing catalytic converters. So there's actually a felony, uh, 496, which is possession of stolen property over $950. So if we stop somebody in a vehicle and they have a catalytic converter like the one I showed you earlier, then they're subject to that penal code. Gotcha. So it's, it's obviously... Because it's worth a thousand, yeah, correct? Or it, at least. At least. Right. Yeah. Tell us, though it's worth a thousand, how much does it cost somebody to replace one? And how do you know if you're a victim? Thousands of dollars for victims. It's yeah. very costly. This has plagued uh, vehicle owners for years now all over the nation. Um, insurance companies you, I encourage people to check their insurance coverage mm -hmm. and see if it's something that is covered. Um, thousands of dollars, they're out to replace, and we've encountered several victims that they've been victimized two and three times, so mm -hmm. it's extremely so somebody costly. who's not particularly familiar with a catalytic converter, what does it do in my car, that sort of thing, how do they know? How do they know? It will make a very loud noise. When you start your vehicle, you will know that it's been stolen, yeah. Ugh. A lot it's of people, just a problem. Yeah, how, how much increase have we seen as far as the number of these uh, sure. thefts? In the county in the past year, there was over a 400% increase. In Oceanside, there was a 700% increase. Oh. What do you attribute that to? I mean, it's like people just figure out, oh, this guy's doing it and made a lot of money, therefore I'm doing it. Is that, is that how it's, it's quick, right? Grown? It's quick. So what I attribute it to through my research is the ease of the crime and then the lack of penalty. And mm. in you know, certain neighboring counties, it's hard to arrest people and book them on certain property crimes. Um, but part of the initiative, the Catalina Converter Initiative, was getting the district attorney's office on board. And they're fully supportive of doing everything they can to prosecute these cases and put people in jail and actually hold them accountable. Is there any way people can get etching done at just even a body shop or somewhere like that if they can't make it into your event? Can you go and be proactive and get it done yourself? So the end goal of having these etching events is to make it a force multiplier where neighboring body shops within the entire county can hold these etching events and then they will just keep track of the vehicle information and report back to somebody in the Catalytic Converter Initiative. And in turn, we will provide the information to the National Insurance Crime Bureau serializing the Catalytic Converter. All right, mm -hmm. something important that we all need to know about, understand yeah. a little better, especially most, you know, the layperson might not understand exactly what it is or how it works or Thank you for clearing uh, that why, why we can be victims of this. Thank you guys for taking the time to to do this and also to uh, help us understand it. Well, thank you for having us. We appreciate you both. Thank you so much.